We're starting a new chapter or chapters on the study of gases. Be sure to read the first section of chapter 13 and then sections 14.1 through 14.4 of the next chapter. This chapter and the chapter 14 are going to discuss the kinetic molecular theory and how it applies to gases. So as a warm-up question, let's take a look at this envelope of a hot air gas balloon. So we've got a molecules inside. We've taken this little edge of the envelope right here and magnified it. So the color in dark blue is showing what's happening to the molecules inside. Of course, if you've ever been underneath one of those balloons, you can hear the roar of the gas that's heating up the propane gas that's heating up the uh, gas of air inside the balloon. So it makes the molecules inside move faster. They start to spread out from each other, as you can see in that blue section. And since there's less matter per unit volume inside as opposed to outside, the inside air is less dense. And what happens is that your next event is that your balloon is up, up, and away. So obviously temperature has an impact on the kinetic energy of molecules and that's going to have an impact upon its state of matter. Now Ms. Hackworth is fond of saying chemistry never sucks. I think she follows this up with something equally rude. It blows instead. But what I think we're actually going to learn is that you don't suck liquid up a straw. You'll be utilizing the outside atmospheric pressure to push liquid up into a straw by reducing pressure at the point where your mouth touches the straw. So let's not dwell on this slide any longer, more on that later. The kinetic molecular theory has a number of um, components to it. All matter consists of tiny particles, and it really explains all forms of matter, but we're going to focus on gases. But gas particles are going to be assumed to have almost no volume, that's what negligible means, relative to the size of the container that they're in. So one of the key concepts that you should note on your PowerPoint notes is that gas molecules are separated from each other by lots of empty space, as opposed to liquids and solids, which are more dense forms of matter because the particles are closer to each other. So gas molecules are separated from each other by empty space. Also, the gas molecules particularly show this constant random straight line motion. So they're always moving around in a straight line until something alters their line of direction. So gases, for this reason, have fluidity. That means they flow and their gas particles have random motion. Collisions between gas particles are what we call elastic. And now what does that mean? It means that when two gas molecules bump into each other, no kinetic energy is lost. It's only transferred from one molecule to another. I'm going to restate the kinetic energy equation. It's one half times the mass times velocity squared. So the mass of the gas particles is the m, and v stands for velocity, which in technical terms is speed in a specific direction. So an elastic collision is kind of like when you use a um, air hockey table. The little pucks float on a cushion of air, and when they bump into each other, because the air cushions the bottom of the pucks, there's minimal friction. So one puck strikes another and almost perfectly imparts its energy to the receiving puck. That's what we mean by an elastic collision. No kinetic energy is lost. Also, gas particles don't really want to have anything to do with each other. They don't attract each other and condense into smaller forms of matter unless you chill or pressurize them. And they don't repel each other. So what gases do that is unique compared to solids and liquids is they expand to fill their containers. I could have a scuba tank full of air in a shape that's roughly a cylinder, but if I open the valve on that scuba tank, it will spread out to occupy the entire room in which that um, gas diving tank is, is contained. 
Also, gases are very compressible. Liquids just tiny amount and solids incompressible. You try to push on a solid and it just shatters. But if you squeeze gas molecules close and into each other, you can get large volumes to shrink down into very small volumes. The average kinetic energy of a gas particle is directly proportional to its Kelvin temperature. Now what does that mean? It means essentially that if you measure the average kinetic energy, the energy of motion of all the particles of a gas, that is our official definition of temperature. It's the way to measure the energy of motion by sticking a thermometer into it that's been calibrated, some like we did on our thermometer lab, to whatever scale you wish to measure temperature in. So the hotter it is, the faster those particles are moving. The colder it is, the more sluggish they become. So let's sum up that kinetic molecular theory. It was developed to explain the behavior of gases and it's a way to explain how molecules in their gaseous state move. Gases consist of a large number of molecules in constant random motion. The volume of each individual gas molecule, or they could be atoms like helium, is negligible, meaning almost nothing relative to the size of the container that they're in. They have little attractive or repulsive forces for each other. Intermolecular force means between two molecules or between two atoms. When they collide, energy will be transferred, but it will be completely transferred elastically, and its average kinetic energy will stay constant as long as you don't change the temperature. So you change the temperature higher or lower, you will make the um, molecules move faster or slower. And as I said, the collisions are perfectly elastic. The average kinetic energy of gas molecules is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. So what it does is it gives us an understanding of what pressure is and how temperature impacts things on the molecular level. And as you'll see, we're going to learn a series of about five or six gas laws the math is pretty basic, but it helps us understand the impact of temperature, volume, and pressure, and later on, the amount of moles of a gas, how that impacts their behavior. So with a real quick definition here, let's talk about what pressure is. Pressure happens in a trap gas when the gas molecules bump into the sides of the container. How often they strike the container and how hard determines how much pressure there is inside that container. If they strike the wall frequently with greater force, then that's greater pressure. And with all other factors being constant, that could be done by heating up that cylinder of gas. So what you're looking at here is an important graph that I would like for you to understand. And assuming that it wasn't color-coded and labeled 100 degrees and 0 degrees Celsius, make sure you understand this. All samples of a gas might be like people. Some move slower, some move faster, but somewhere in the middle we are all moving at about an average speed. Well, gas molecules have the same conditions. Down here you can see whether you are a beaker of hot gas or a container of cold gas, both of those have gas molecules that are moving slowly. That's what's on the horizontal axis and both also have a few molecules that are moving rapidly. If you examine the vertical axis, it means of all the molecules inside that container, what fraction of them have a particular speed. So don't get wor too worried about the details. The question might be on a test without that labeling on there, which of these two graphs represents a sample of gas at a hotter temperature? And one way you can understand it is look for the peak of that bell curve. You notice that this blue line shows the peak of its largest number of molecules are moving at a speed, I don't know, let's call that like medium. But even though this red line is less in height, notice it's shifted over to the right. 
which means at this point on the red line that the most of the molecules are moving with a faster speed. So both samples have molecules moving slowly and quickly. But if you shift the curve over to the right, that means more of the molecules within that sample are moving faster. And that's what we mean when we say something's hotter. Not only can temperature impact the energy or the speed at which molecules move, obviously their mass can also be a factor in how quickly they move. And more on this later, this has a direct correlation to um, recent events where we are negotiating with the country of Iran to regulate their nuclear energy program. And I'll talk about that later, but for right now, on the horizontal axis of this graph, you can see we're indicating how fast can gases go in meters per second. The vertical axis is showing the fraction of molecules within that sample that have a particular speed. So if I look at the periodic table and I go get the molar mass of the lightest element, hydrogen, you can see that its curve is spread out and pushed way over to the right. Yes, it's a very flat curve, but what it means is that here at its peak, more of its molecules are moving faster. Now compare it to oxygen with a molar mass of 32 or nitrogen with a molar mass of 28, they're heavier. And so their graph peaks farther over here to the left, showing that most of the oxygen molecules compared to hydrogen are moving slowly, assuming all of them are at the same temperature. So we're gonna keep temperature constant, one of the factors that influences the rapidity with which molecules move through space is their molar mass. So having looked at that, the impact of temperature and of, of the molecular mass, you can also think about just what it's like for a car to move from a stopped uh, point to speed up on, say, a roadway compared to a heavy truck. The truck's way heavier and it's going to move much more slowly as it begins to speed up relative to the zippy light car next to it. Here are some common gases, none of which you need to memorize at this point in time. <clears throat> but a lot of the substances that we've been writing chemical equations for have been actually gases at room temperature. The factors that affect a gas are its volume, its pressure, and the temperature. There is a fourth value that affects the characteristic of a gas, and we're going to talk about that when we move into the higher level gas law equations, and that is the number of particles, or more specifically, the number of moles. So we will stop here and take up the concept of pressure at the next podcast. See you then.